Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In today's class, we will talk about pulmonary edema. Pulmonary edema is one of the important topic all of you should know. Pulmonary edema. So, all of you have already studied uh, regarding the pathophysiology of edema in your basic uh, pathology. And I will just highlight those things here in today's lecture. But our main uh, concern is we will talk about pulmonary edema, edema in the lung parenchyma. So, what is the definition of pulmonary edema? Just like any other things, definition all of you can see there. It is a condition characterized by accumulation of excess fluid. I, all of you should remember accumulation of excess fluid in the alveoli. That is, excess fluid starts getting in the alveoli. How these fluids get accumulated? If you recollect, all the fluid is mainly from the capillaries, interstitial capillaries. The fluid starts exuding from the capillaries and starts accumulating into the alveolar lumen. So, this condition of accumulation of excess fluid in the alveolar lumen, we call it as pulmonary edema. Right? All of you can see that schematic diagram. So, when you see on the last diagram, you have alveoli, all the alveoli, they have fluid collection in their lumen. So, this condition is known as pulmonary edema, right. Let us see, what all causes pulmonary edema? That means, that those are all called etiological factors. All the etiological factors which are responsible for edema in general, they are also responsible for the causation of edema in the pulmonary parenchyma. What are those? Want to highlight few things. Hemodynamic edema. Hemodynamic edema that means in this we have two things. One, any condition which causes increased hydrostatic pressure. Increased hydrostatic pressure that causes accumulation of excess uh, fluid in the lung alveoli and any condition which causes decreased plasma oncotic pressure, oncotic pressure. Both these conditions leads to accumulation of fluid. You should know at least three to four important conditions which causes increased hydrostatic pressure and then again another two to three or three to four conditions which causes decreased plasma oncotic pressure. So, what are those conditions? Conditions have been mentioned there. The most prominent feature of pulmonary edema that causes increased hydrostatic pressure is left sided heart failure. Left sided heart failure due to mitral stenosis. In developing countries like India, most common cause of mitral stenosis is rheumatic heart disease. Okay. That I am going to talk about the exact pathophysiology of this in my next few slides. Any conditions when you have excess fluid overload, excess fluid overload also causes increased hydrostatic pressure. So, all of you what you should observe when you have a clinical postings is you might have seen patients lying in the bed with the IV drip set. All of you might have seen this and there is a small regulator in the IV. So, before infusing any kind of a fluid, they will calculate how much fluid has to be infused into the body and each fluid has to be regulated properly. Why there is regulation? Mainly because to prevent the excess fluid overload in the vascular uh, system. That is why if when you are having a ward rounds, if any patient is on IV fluids, if more and more or excess IV fluid is administered, if he develops respiratory dizziness, think of developing 
pulmonary edema in those patients. You have to stop the fluid immediately. Okay, these things you should observe. So any causes which uh, of increased excess overload, they will also cause edema. Any condition which causes venous obstruction. Venous obstruction. When there is obstruction to the normal flow of blood in the veins, the hydrostatic pressure will increase and gradually they will develop pulmonary edema. So, these are the three important conditions all of you should know. So, some conditions which causes decreased plasma oncotic pressure. What are those? Nephrotic syndrome, where there is increased protein loss, right? Then, any condition chronic liver condition that is cirrhosis where there is decreased synthesis of proteins hence decreased plasma oncotic pressure increased loss decreased synthesis again increased loss protein losing enteropathy protein losing enteropathy Okay, and even in some case of severe malnutrition, severe protein energy malnutrition. So, all those causes decreased plasma oncotic pressure ultimately leading to pulmonary edema. Second, so these are the important things, two things you should remember. So, most common. Next, any condition which causes damage to the capillary wall, blood vessels, any condition which causes damage to the capillary wall, damage, they also can cause pulmonary edema. What are those conditions? Any toxic gases, toxic gases, any evidence of vasculitis, severe trauma, lung surgeries and certain drugs. Important thing, shock. All those features, they cause damage to the capillary wall hence when there is capillary wall is damaged the fluid which is there in the capillary starts accumulating in the alveolar lumen so all of you know these things and lastly edema in certain conditions where the exact pathophysiology is not known so edema in undetermined causes what are those causes there is one high altitude and second one is neurogenic edema seen in central nervous system trauma so, neurogenic edema and high altitude. High altitude is one of the important conditions. I will give you an example. If anyone wants to climb a Mount Everest, they were not allowed to climb immediately. Why? Mainly because they develop pulmonary edema. Without acclimatization, they will get pulmonary edema. It may be serious. A patient may die because of severe pulmonary edema. What they will do? They will ask you to stay in a base camp for a week or so so that you can acclimatize gradually you will go up and up okay you cannot go immediately gradually so that your body system will get accustomed to the new pressures okay and low oxygen content of the environment that's why this is very important all of you should remember all mountaineers should remember this so these are the important etiological factors which causes pulmonary edema and i'll just revise the basic concept of this pulmonary edema, so not only pulmonary edema, it is the basic concept of any kind of edema, I will just rebrush it. All of you can see that picture, that picture is very much similar and all of you have studied and seen in your basic pathology teaching modules. So let us see, here we have a arterial end, you have artery that is capillary side, arterial side, then on other end actually the vein start. This is the arteriolar end and this is the venous end. Always in the capillary where the diffusion takes place, the arteries they have increased hydrostatic pressure, hydrostatic pressure. The main function of increased hydrostatic pressure is to push the fluid outside. So at arteriolar end you will have fluid extravasating outside from the vascular lumen, okay, you will have fluid here in the interstitium. This whole part is the interstitium, interstitium. The fluids will come. Then as the blood moves from arterial side to the venous side, there will be decreased hydrostatic pressure, 
decrease so all of you can see decrease hydrostatic pressure so what will happen and plasma oncotic pressure so when there is decreased hydrostatic pressure with increased plasma oncotic pressure what happens it sucks the fluid which is there in the interstitium the fluid is going out here it is traveling and the same fluid is entering the venous end of the capillaries so this is how it happens during this process what happens small amount of fluid will be remaining so not it's not 100% 100% of the fluid which is coming out will not be absorbed maybe 95 or 98% another 2 to 5 percent of the fluid which is there in the interstitium they will be cleared by another channels vascular channels called as lymphatics right lymphatics any conditions where there is severe increase in hydrostatic pressure you will have more accumulation of fluid right in the interstitium leading to edema any conditions where there is severe decrease in plasma oncotic pressure again more accumulation of fluid in the interstitium that is edema or any condition when these are usually this will be in equilibrium both will be in equilibrium any alteration will cause fluid accumulation in the interstitium and the last one is any condition which causes lymphatic obstruction whatever may be the cause radiation obliteration of the lymphatics any lymphangitis any tumor causing obstruction of the lymphatics ultimately leads to accumulation of fluid in the interstitium so any conditions can lead to formation of edema in general let's see okay we know the definition of edema we have seen the pathophysiological forces how the edema will form we have seen the etiological factors let's see if the patient is having pulmonary edema when it comes to medical OPD, how he presents? So, those are called as clinical features. Let us assume if I have a pulmonary edema, that means more and more uh, water is getting collected in my lungs, which usually contains only the air. What happens? The patient will feel very heaviness in the chest, right? Heaviness in the chest. Whenever there is heaviness in the chest, there will be difficulty in breathing, dyspnea. When there is dyspnea, there will be decreased oxygen diffusion capacity. Patient ultimately presents with hypoxemia. Hypoxemia. When there is hypoxemia, you will have hypercapnia. Increased retention of carbon dioxide in the blood. Then, when there is hypoxemia, hypercapnia, the patient will have tachycardia, sorry, we will say first tachypnea. To compensate hypoxemia, the patient will have increased respiratory rate. So, when there is increased respiratory rate, heart rate will also increase, that is tachycardia. Patient will have chest pain, patient will have chest pain. The most important thing, especially in pulmonary edema, is these patients will have cough. They present with cough. The characteristic of cough is when they have a cough, the fluid which is there accumulated in the alveolar lumen, it will also come out. So, they will have pink frothy, pink frothy sputum like specimen will be expelled from the uh, lung parenchyma. So, this is very characteristic of pulmonary edema. Okay? In severe cases, if the pulmonary edema is severe, what can happen? Severe hypoxema ultimately leads to cyanosis, development of cyanosis. That is central cyanosis. The patient's mouth, mucosal surface, tongue will become bluish in color. So, when you have a lot of fluid in the chest cavity, when you cannot breathe, what can happen? You will get more of an anxiety, restlessness, confusion. So, all those things will occur along with these clinical features. All of you understood? Let us see. The patient, yes, we have seen the clinical features. Patients, clinically, we are thinking of pulmonary edema because of these clinical features. Now, we will see. If you take chest x-ray of any patient of pulmonary edema, how it looks, how the radiologist will see, how he 
radiologist diagnosis pulmonary edema so all of you can see the radiology picture there the important signs of radiology of pulmonary edema what is one you can see the bronchovascular markings will become more prominent okay if there is lung here a left and right lung uh, this is the hilus part the bronch prominent bronchovascular markings will be seeing upwards upwards okay along with that you have multiple haziness because of interstitial fluid collection or fluid collection in the alveoli you will see marked haziness towards the both hilus extending towards the periphery mark haziness because of fluid accumulation you may see some kind of pleural effusion pleural effusion right important prominent vasculature presence of haziness on bilateral hilar region presence of pleural effusion so these are the important characteristic signs when the radiologist see under x ray they will say this patient belongs to pulmonary edema okay so when you see this this part no it looks like if you trace this part it looks like butterfly right hence this sign we call it as butterfly sign or bat wings wing sign so those are the important radiological signs that you should draw along with that one more important things are that i would like to highlight is presence of curly lines this is important all of you will learn what are curly lines curly lines they are nothing but prominent vascular markings one if it is the vascular marking going outward from the mediastinum we call it as curly a lines and the prominent vascular markings which they are coming parallel towards the hilus they are situated at the periphery we call it as curly b lines presence of curly b lines is more characteristic of pulmonary edema so all of you will learn in detail when you have a radiological postings but for you presently this important signs of radiological features is sufficient to say it is a case of pulmonary edema right you can see the picture how they have a mentioned as bat wing sign or a butterfly appearance on check radiology usually seen in case of pulmonary edema <coughs> let's see what exactly the pathophysiology of pulmonary edema how it occurs in all books the sequential events they have been uh, mentioned in any of the standard textbooks the most common etiological factor is left heart failure due to metal stenosis let's see what all happens so we'll show the same uh, sequence of events here there is a heart this is the right and left side right this is a metal stenosis when there is severe metal stenosis what will happen blood cannot flow from left atria to the left ventricle right when blood cannot flow the pressure and the volume in the left atria will increase increase pressure increased volume hence left atria will dilate when left atrial pressure a volume increases what happens the pressure cannot be transmitted to the left ventricle the which structures are opening in the left atria those are pulmonary veins the same pressure will be transmitted backwards into the pulmonary veins these pulmonary veins where it comes it comes from right and left lungs right and left lungs so the pressure in the pulmonary vein leads to increased pressure in the pulmonary parenchyma vascular parenchyma right when there is increased pressure what pressure will increase the oncogenic pressure will be normal but there is increased hydrostatic pressure when you have whenever you have increased hydrostatic pressure in the pulmonary parenchyma ultimately in the pulmonary capillaries interstitial capillaries the plasma fluid which exudes into the alveolar lumen that is the only space where fluids can accumulate so when you have alveoli each alveoli will be filled up with fluid this is called pulmonary edema hence when you have fluid air cannot diffuse diffusion cannot take place 
at this stage okay usually edema in a standing position occurs in the dependent portion of the lungs that you should remember so this is the important pathophysiological process of developing pulmonary edema in any patient of left heart failure right all of you should remember this before fluid enters into the alveoli alveolar lumen first it always enters into the interstitium because capillaries are present in interstitium first fluid will comes into the interstitium hence interstitium will become prominent later on from the interstitium it starts accumulating into the alveolar lumen okay this is the pathophysiology of pulmonary edema let's see if i see if any pulmonary edema specimen lung specimen is given to you how it looks what are the gross morphological features of pulmonary edema gross features so we'll consider the lung as a sponge right lung is nothing but a sponge you can press it is like consistency of a sponge if the sponge is filled up with water what all can happen right any rubber any kind of a material expandable material filled up with water what all can happen one the volume will increase there is increase in volume right number two if instead of air if you have fluid what will happen increase in weight the weight will increase increase in weight if the lungs is kept in an anatomical position because of gravity most of the edema fluids will be accumulated in the lower lobes so dependency lower lobe will become more prominent all of you can see in that gross picture okay and what happens number 3 all of us know lung when they are in normal anatomical position they have certain borders borders are clearly defined so when you put lot of fluid instead of air in the border what will happen the border will become rounding so any square balloon whatever if you take if you pour water ultimately the structure would form is a circle the masking of border so that means the borders you cannot make out blurring of border or rounding of the borders will happen so after this when you cut the lung and squeeze it so what will happen you will have because the lung contains water pulmonary edema lung contains water along with the air when you squeeze it you will see frothy fluid frothy fluid that is exudes from the cut surface spongy surface so that you should remember okay those things you can see the second picture how the frothy fluid is exuding from the cut surface of the lung it exactly looks when you see or examining a patients of uh, pulmonary edema right all of you should see this kind of pictures in a forensic when you have forensic postings right if you take microscopic sections of pulmonary edema how it looks let's see about microscopy microscopy means histological examination nothing you will have a alveoli alveoli because alveoli the pulmonary edema the main source of fluids is the interstitial capillaries you will see prominent interstitial capillaries that is congestion of interstitial capillaries you can see in the pictures interstitial capillaries if you concentrate at the interceptum uh, alveolar interstitium you will see congested capillaries and the empty alveolar lumen is completely filled up with eosinophilic proteinaceous material this is in the initial stages initial stages you will have only the fluid gets exuded from the interstitial capillaries only fluid with very minimal or no cells in the alveolar lumen this is the characteristic features of pulmonary edema in initial stages when you see under microscopy what happens next if you don't treat the cause at this stage what all can happen these capillaries as i told you or if you can recollect in my first class these capillaries they will not have any basement membrane they are very fragile if you have constant increase in pressure intraluminal pressure these capillaries will rupture once these capillaries ruptures the blood which is there in the capillaries 
they enter the alveolar lumen. So you will see lot of RBCs in the lumen. So one thing you should remember, if RBCs they are travelling in blood, the normal life span of RBCs varies somewhere around 100 to 120 days. If the same RBCs from the vessel lumen, if it comes out, RBCs will not stay for long time, within a day or two they will destroy. So when these RBCs will be destroyed, the hemoglobin and iron will be released. Hemoglobin will be reutilized for erythropoietic synthesis. Iron which is there, it starts deposited here in the alveoli. Some of you might have taken iron injections. When you take iron injection, it is very painful. right? When iron gets deposited here and it also very stimulant the, to the adjacent cells. When iron gets deposited, to clear off the iron, you will have macrophages. Alveolar macrophages, they will come, they will engulf iron and after engulfing iron, iron, they will become hemosiden laden macrophages. Hemosiderin laden macrophages after engulfing iron. So, these hemosiderin laden macrophages gradually depending on the duration of the disease process starts accumulating in the alveolar lumen. Initially, you may see one, but later on in the disease progresses, you will see many iron laden macrophages gets deposited here. Whenever there is iron, macrophage gets activated, it releases, it stimulates the interstitial fibroblasts also. Interstitial fibroblasts which proliferates and leads to interstitial fibrosis. Interstitial fibrosis. So, when you see the gross of lung in the end stage at this level, you will see only the firm to hard lung, mainly because it is a chronic process, lot of fibrosis has developed, fluid is almost gone and it is filled up with lot of hemosiderin laden macrophages and it is red to brown in color it becomes red to brown in color, dark red to brown in color. Hence, this stage we call it as brown in duration of the lung. This is called as brown in duration of the lung. This all of you should remember, in the chronic stage, it becomes brown in, in duration of the lung. Initially, when they were doing autopsy studies, Whenever they have a patient of left sided heart failure, they almost always they found hemosiderin laden macrophages in the alveolar lumen. Right? Hence, these cells they initially called as heart failure cells. Heart failure cells. So, heart failure cells they are nothing but hemosiderin laden macrophages. Okay? Actually, it is misnormal. Almost always, hemosiderin laden macrophages can be seen in many conditions, but initially they found in uh, heart failure patients, they labeled it as heart failure cells, but still the terminology is still retained. Okay, heart failure cells for your sake, nothing but hemosiderin laden macrophages. Understood? So, this is a typical microscopic feature of pulmonary edema when you see under microscope. Okay. This is all about pulmonary edema in today's class. right? I will just highlight few important points in pulmonary edema. Today, we spoke about the definition of pulmonary edema and we spoke how the edema develops in the pulmonary alveoli, what is the pathophysiological or etiological factors which causes pulmonary edema. We saw how the gross lung or pulmonary edema lung looks, how it looks under microscopy what are the clinical features, the signs and symptoms these patient presents with, what is the radiological features and what is the microscopic features, right. Thank you.